Hey everyone, my name is Mo Bean, and today we're going over two variable data, models and scatter plots. Let's get started. Two variable data involves two different types of variables, such as the number of hours a student spends studying and the grade that they get. Now, how do we make sense of all this data? That's where models come in. A model is a mathematical representation that helps us understand the relationship between two variables. In our model, we can use the amount of time a student spends studying for an exam to try and predict what grade they will receive. Here we have a fake generated table that represents study time in relation to student test score. We can see that as study time increases, so does the test score. One of the best ways to visualize this table is to use a scatter plot. A scatter plot is a graph with two axes. Each point on the graph represents a pair of data. Let's see how these two work together. We can make the same observation on the scatter plot as we made earlier based on the table. The test score is increasing as the time spent studying increases. The mathematical model for this was already calculated for us. It's known as the best fit line and it comes in slope intercept form. This shows the general trend of data and it doesn't perfectly line up with the actual data points, but it's close enough. The goal is to see the general trend of the data. Let's do a quick review on what important information we can collect from the best fit line written in slope intercept form. Since it's in slope intercept form, we can determine what the slope is based on the number next to the x. We can also determine where the y intercept is based on the number that's being added or subtracted from the slope. So let's look at the formula y equals 3.81x plus 70.3. Based on the information we just learned and this formula, we can determine that the slope is 3.81x and the y-intercept is 70.3. Now, if you're like me, you might be wondering, why is this the y-intercept 70.3? Isn't it actually 70? Well, the reason why the y-intercept is 70.3 is because we're going off the y-intercept of the best fit line. Remember, the best fit line won't be a perfect representation of the data, rather a general trend of where the data points are going. Now that we've learned a little bit more about scatter plots and models, let's look at some problems from the SAT. Which of the following equations is the most appropriate linear model for the data shown in the scatter plot? Let's apply what we learned about slope intercept form to answer this question. We can see that the points are moving downward from left to right. That means our slope is negative. From that, we can automatically eliminate any answer choices that don't have a negative slope. Which one of these answer choices don't have a negative slope? That would be C and D. We can go ahead and eliminate those now. From the answer choices that remain, let's look at the y-intercept. The y-intercept from the two remaining answer choices are negative 10.1 and positive 10.1. Which one of these seems correct to you? Positive 10.1 is the correct y-intercept for this graph as it follows the general trend of the data points. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Let's do another problem for extra practice. Which of the following equations is the most appropriate linear model for the data shown? To solve this one, we want to do the same thing we just did on the previous problem. Take a second to figure out what the slope would be again Will it be positive or negative? The slope is negative since the data points are moving downward. That means we can eliminate answers A and C. Now let's figure out what the y-intercept is. Remember the y-intercept is the point where the line crosses the y-axis. So let's imagine a best fit line is drawn on this scatter plot. Where would it cross the y-axis? Somewhere close to positive 10. So our answer that closely matches that is D y equals 9.4 minus 0.9x. For more practice problems like the ones in this video and access to a 24-7 online practice tool, check out ACIT at the link below. ACIT is the ultimate study tool for the SATs and ACTs created by Junior Learning, an award-winning educational tech company that has helped thousands of students take their learning to the next level. Get a free trial when you use the link in the description. Until next time.